Welcome back, pro wrestling fans. Welcome back, IWC. It's your old buddy, the guardian of chaos, Big Daddy. And I tell it like it is. Here for another special edition on Guardian of Chaos, the YouTube channel for Chaos Corner. Now, fans, recently I just uploaded an episode, a live edition of Chaos Corner, talking about everything from pillar to post, coast to coast, border to border, reality and respect, and the current state of affairs and podcasters and opinions and sports entertainment, AEW, WWE. Giving it to you, one man, unique, unedited, unscripted, raw dog, like only I can. So go back and check it out. Drop an elbow on that like button. Heck, I rake it if you want. Give it a little finger poke. Thanks for being here. Much love and respect. And uh, if you see where the last show uh, ended, and what I really wanted to talk about, I'm not going to start my usual five to seven minutes, sometimes ten minute opening monologue here. Uh, because <laughs> I went 50 minutes with an opening monologue on the last show, so I want you to check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. Shout out to my moderators, my brother from another mother, Austin Nance, and of course the OTS Tribal Queen. Holding it down, keeping it real, maintaining it in the chat. I hope everyone's doing okay mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. We're here for a stress reliever. We're here for some fun. For a much-needed distraction in the insanity of 2024, with only like, what, 10 or 11 days left to the election. So, like-minded people, use your own discernment, don't be distracted. And let's roll. What I wanted to talk about, and again, if you see the, the last 5 or 10 minutes of uh, the last show, which went 50 minutes, it was fantastic. We had a lot of fun. I spoke from the heart. Again. So thanks for being here, guys. You know the issues I've had if you go on the community page about what's happening here on YouTube and why I've been uploading videos and in-ring videos and classics and ladies from the 80s and uh, talk shows with pro wrestlers on it and legends and heroes and a lot of the people that I worked with in the business and uh, that humbled and honored to do so here on the channel. Thank you to everyone who also let me use some of their footage because most of it's from the vault here at Chaos Chronicles. You see the channel, uh, 2,000 subscribers, coming up on 1 million total views, over 35 or 37,000 of you last week. It was a record here on this channel. So again, I can't thank you guys enough for being here, all sincerity. But what I wanted to talk about, and we talked about the magazine era, and, and, and me being a, a boy, you know, 7, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14 years old, 16 years old, 17 through the 70s. And then in my early, middle, late 20s and the 80s. And heck, even, even in my 30s and early 90s and middle 90s, so on and so forth. Of my years in the business all the way to the mid-2000s. And then still currently uh, doing the color commentary and play-by-play -play for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling on all social media platforms. Really incredible guys, my brothers of uh, 30 and 40 years, worked in the WWF, WCW. Pretty Paul Rome was our head trainer and booker. I don't have to say enough about Paul Roma. The Power and Glory podcast. Hey Roma, the podcast. The Roman Nation. Four Horsemen, Power and Glory. Young Stallions, pretty wonderful. Can we put some fucking respect on that? It's not deserved, it's earned. And family in the military and a true patriot for the United States of America and this country. You don't want to miss those shows. And then, of course, there's the owner who was also had an eight-year run in the WWF as a jobber. Okay, we'll call it like it is. For the biggest and largest wrestling company in the world during the golden era. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And that would be Mario Mancini. At one time was the youngest wrestler in the WWF. Let that sink in. 84 to 92. You can't take that away. And then second generation grappler, our sound guy, our producer, cousin to Roberto Soto, both his parents were luchadors, had his pro wrestling training in his basement, and went on to New York in the WWF, late 80s, early 90s. Paul Perez, Mr. Paul Perez, second generation grappler, as I said. And then there's the big man who had his stint in the WWF, six foot seven, 350 pounds. 
owner of the Rib House and Ribs to Go here in the Greater New England Tri-State Northeast area in the Constitution State, the Nutmeg State, if you will. The Rib House. And that would be big! Steve Tracy. That's the Paradise Four. In operation for a decade. Go back with each other three and four decades, including yours truly. Doesn't get much better than that. So just to give you a little background, and so that magazine era was no better way to learn from the business. Listen, this is all kayfabe. It's sports entertainment. It's, to me, pro wrestling, especially back then. So keep it in perspective for all you geeks and nerds and dweebs and goons and neckbeards and everyone out there that get offended. Extreme liberals. That's the truth, liptards. You don't like it, change the channel. It's just that simple. Live and let live. So uh, remember what we're dealing with here, guys. Sports entertainment, music, come on. So I talked about it, the magazine era, what it meant, uh, Inside Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, The Wrestler, all the, listen, there's so many you can name from back in the 70s. The cigar stores, going in and picking out the magazines, 99 cents, dollar ninety nine, unbelievable just really was no better time to grow up and as i said in the, in the last show because this is a show it's not a podcast you're gonna fucked up well i apologize for the cussing man it really was incredible even into the 80s that's how you learned about everything and you used your imagination that's storytelling that's emotional investment think about it in the time machine here keep it perspective in my age the big six oh and Got a big weekend coming up, so I'm already. You guys, I'm the old man, Brandy, the over fifty demo god. Not everyone's gonna like you, man. I'm not here to be liked. One viewer, one view. I don't care. I don't make a nickel off this. YouTube hasn't given me. Ungats, kekats, ifa. Konichiwa, peha wa mele hini kane. Pupule wiki wiki mo. Aloha mahalo. No me holo mai go me way te kulo wa bene. And so I speak of that in common with several languages. What do you want me to tell you? That's what you get here. That's why you're here. You never know what's going to happen, what I'm going to say, and what I'm going to present. <laughs> what? Too much? Too soon? No better, just unique. Entertainment personified. So the wrestling era... I told you on the end of the last show, so to catch you up here to speed, I have the last three pro wrestling illustrated here to compare and talk about and different things. I want to talk about reports and ratings, not so much the articles, but we're going to thumb through them. We'll be here for half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. It's good to be back after uh, two plus weeks of not being here live to tape because it's same day coverage because of YouTube. Too many uploads, copyrights, no one gets back to you, Silicon Valley. I don't know what you're doing out there, man. I, re I really don't. Become a member. Drop an elbow on that like button, like I said. It's like two bucks a month. At the most, I think, two ninety nine. Not needed. Certainly not needed. Again, I'm not making anything from this. But much appreciated. I appreciate my members who are here and the loyalists who have been here. Because we've been at this for about four years, solid. It's a lot of work. But I give it to you, as I always say, raw dog. Hello, McFly. Is anybody home? Settle in. Again, the cover. December of 2024, so we're ahead of the future. Cody Rhodes and the legendary 34th annual PWI 500. We'll give it a peruse. We'll give it a peruse. You guys know I report live Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, when I can, schedule permitting. I'm a busy guy, man. Busier than a blow up down a frat party, but I'm certainly as confused as baby and hooters. You guys know that. Well, you get it, right? AEW, WWE, Raw, SmackDown, on my community page here on the YouTube channel. And of course, over at Twitter. Follow me over there. There, I'm live at Big Daddy G O C, and the G O C stands for the Guardian of Chaos. And it's not toxic on my timeline. Or if you follow me, too bad the toxic. I don't have time for it. Twitter's the largest social media app and has the farthest reaching in the platforms. All of them. 
Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, Truth Social. I don't know Truth Social. I don't know what you're on, man. Gab, whatever the fuck it is you're on. I apologize for the cussing. So we have that. Again, we're ahead of the future. Supposedly the October surprise. If he's for us, no one else can be against us. Remember that. Like all, all, everyone that's watching, God bless you all, and I mean that from my heart. That's a shoot. Fall of 2024, which is what we're in here in October. It's almost Halloween, man. Boom! I scare you? I know somebody jumped. <laughs> Whoa, that's, a, that's why you're here. Mercedes Monet, the gold rush. Not doing a lot for the ratings and attend, live attendance. Again, cafe ratings don't mean anything, but live attendance and ticket sales do. I'm a fan of all pro wrestling. WWE, AEW, I want no one to, to fail. Impact, Maple Leaf, TNA, uh, uh, TNA Impact, I already said Ring of Honor, NWA, MLW. I don't want any of them. CMLL, AAA, New Japan. I don't want any of them to fail. I love pro wrestling, all of it. It's nice to have alternatives. If you don't like it, you don't have to watch it. That's the beauty of it. Mercedes Monet. We'll break it down. Again, I want to compare the ratings. Nothing, you know what really burns my ass? Besides a, a flame about this high. Is the ratings in here. And I did a show about a fucking year ago. On Pro Wrestling Illustrated. And put it out on Twitter as well. Complaining about it. Someone I love. And Bill Apter and I are the same Hall of Fame class. Let that sink in. Let that marinate. Bill Apter, Inside Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Illustrated, the legend of photographer. Uh, also, uh, a legend like Gary Michael Capetta, author, best-selling, ring announcer, legend. Uh, the heart throbs, Romeo Rossella and Antonio Thomas that were in the WWE. Had a nice run, two or three years, maybe five. Unbelievable grapplers to this day. We're all in the same pro wrestling, New England pro wrestling, Hall of Fame together. So why would I say that to Slick Willie, my old buddy? I'm not here. I'm here to give it to you straight, man. Because I tell it like it is. And then we have uh, October 2024. And again, I'll let you know what the what months they were covered in here because it's like they're two or three months behind. It's my pet peeve. I, I know it's a lot of work. Respect everyone that does this over here and have for uh, uh, 34, 35 years. Roxanne Perez. So that's what we have here and that's what we're going to cover. And how about, again, I'm, uh, I, I pull no punches here. I feel good, I look good, and I'm hoping to have many more years to leave my family. I'm 60 years old, about to change the calendar, if you know what I mean. Thank you, I appreciate it. Greetings and salutations. I, I'm, I'm humbled and honored by your uh, well wishes. It's going to be a great weekend into next week. <laughs> what? Man, that, that's the clue. Are you picking up what I'm putting out? 34th annual PWI 500. So again, uh, I failed math twice in college. I had to take non-credit for two semesters before I got onto my third semester of, uh, of math and finally passed it at an institute of, of higher learning. But I certainly knew how to count out my paycheck when I worked behind the walls. It's another story for another time. 34th annual. So this started again, if I know my math, the PWA 500 didn't even start until I was in my 30s. It was big. When I was in the business, you know, you guys know I traveled in the late 80s with some pretty famous people in that business, that in industry. Uh, Freebird Michael Hayes, Samoa and SWAT team, you know, you know, Fatu and Big Samu uh, in the early 80s, 83, when the first introduction with Little Sam, the Tonga Kid, that whole connection at World Gym, and then of course the Quest Facility, the legendary Quest Facility. You guys know that. Rocky Jones' school, Iron Mike Sharp school, Johnny Rods briefly down at Gleason's. All the different Jason Knight's House of Pain pro wrestling do dojo even later in years. I've been all over the place. Just just to give you the background, the strong man Kenny Fontano, 
benching 660 pounds, one of my personal trainers, and of course, martial artist Randy Roach, who trained all the law enforcement here, the head of it in the state. That's another story for another time. So just to put it in perspective of, this is the 34th annual PWI 500. And I don't agree with a lot of this stuff. And if you go back to the show that I did on this originally, the one show that I did cover Pro Wrestling Illustrated, I called them out. I didn't get a big response. It's not for that. It's not to get attention, clicks, views. I'm going to do this no matter who's watching. And I know that some of you are. It gets back to me, certain people that are supposedly big leaguers and big hitters and big influence in, in this uh, community, this uh, line of work. So it's all good. Just know that I know. And you know that I know that you're watching and that it gets back to me and that you got to get up real early in the morning or super, super late at night to be one step ahead of the reaper. It's a figure of speech. It's a quote. You guys know that I'm a Christian and I call it out. But I can't get them allowed to give my person, my channel, my, let you know who I am. So this way, if you don't like it, like a lot of people who let the politics of whether it be Cornette and The Undertaker and Batista and Kane and Mick Foley and Kevin Nash, you guys, uh, people let, and then Bruce Springsteen and, and Tom Hanks and uh, Michael Keaton, who gives a fuck with Taylor Swift? Who cares? We really care about what they don't live in our world. Home divot, home slice, home boy, home jacket, home skillet. You get it, right? Home boy. So that's what we're going to do. I appreciate Again, I appreciate everyone being here. This is specifically, especially what's going on in this country. Wars, rumors of wars, the environment. Not climate change. There's a big difference. The environment. Border invasion. Hate, racism. All of it's going on. And there's only two groups and two sexes. You guys know that, right? Men and women. Boys and girls. No matter what you think or what you say. I don't care if you get offended. It is what it is. I don't care if you're pro-life, pro-choice. That's on you. You don't affect me. I don't work for anybody. No men and women sports. Period. Get it? Period. Get it? No men and women sports. And as far as all this other gender, identity, race, religion, good, I don't give a fuck about that either. You do what you want. We will all bow and all confess. Remember that whether you believe it or not, you will. We're all going to face him. Okay. So where should we start? I'm not going to start with the PWI 500. We'll save that for a little bit later. Don't go anywhere. Hey, listen. We're only 18, 19 minutes in. Less than 20 minutes in. I know the 80s op board, VCRs, tape, de tape decks, cassettes. What am I talking about? We go back like a recliner. We go back like eight tracks, man. Now... It's either Roxanne Perez or the Gold Rush. They're both stated for fall in October of 2024, which is what we're in. The election's right around the corner, man. And these people that say, oh, I'm not going to vote, I don't vote. I can understand to an extent. It's your choice. Again, I'm going to say that. You be you, I'll be me. Don't jam it down my throat, man. But no offense. If that's what you're into. So I'll give you the time. So we'll, we'll check it out here. And what they cover, the things that really, again, it's not going to be so much about the articles. And the Roxanne cover, which says October of 2024, is from the period, the time frame, the, the ratings period of what, again, we're in October. This is dated for October, but this is for the period ending of June 2024. June 2024. So July, August, September, October. This is literally four months behind. I get it. It's got to be printed. I get everything that goes into it. I was in this business as well, as well as the radio business. WLNV 90.1 FM. Sly Bubba Stone. I had a good time. I was 16, 17 years old. 
<gasps> as we go forward and go back here in the time machine. So that's that's the thing about Pro Real Illustrating, Wrestling Illustrated, that irks me to this day. Four months behind? Don't put so much shit and kayfabe news in here and your own agenda and, and to please everybody like certain people do in organizations, whether it be WWE, AEW. Figure it out for yourself. Use your own discernment. Four months behind. June of 2024. So, I mean, keep that in perspective here. Remember, if this isn't real, it's like sports opera. It's like theater. It's entertainment. It's sports. It's athleticism. The hardest thing you'll ever fucking do in your life. Don't worry about MLB, NBA, NFL, soccer, NHL. No, 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 no. Pro wrestling. Especially back in the 70s, 80s, into the 90s. I, I can't speak for the last, you know, decade to two decades. And I still support it. Just like independent pro wrestling, which is the backbone of this fucking industry in every a town, city, state, across the country. Japan, Mexico, Canada. Remember that. It's like a territorial system. I say it on every show, and I'll continue to say it. So that's what Roxanne Perez' time frame is here in October, but that's June. And the Mercedes Monet, Sasha Banks. Boy, did you fucking blow it. Not financially. I'm not going to question your judgment. This is for this period ending in July 7th of 2024. So after the 4th of July of this summer. So this is even more recent. Let's start off with these two. And the biggest complaint I had eight months ago, a year ago, when I did the first and uh, navigate the playlist. There's 4,000 videos. I get it. But go to the playlist under talk shows or under in-ring action or classics or family fun or, or chaos corner shows, chaos clips. Go to the playlist and it's under chaos corner shows and you'll be able to find it easier. There's like 450 or 500 of those out of the 5,000, 4,000 videos here. Nobody works harder for you than I do. Nobody. I used to, my, what really got me going is that when they would do the top in the categories, even in the ratings for different companies, and I understand most popular and most hated. Again, it's a work, Kate Fabe, man. Nobody knows better than me who grew up in the magazine era and earlier. Okay, so remember why the fuck you're here. My over 50 years as a researcher, a scout, an analyst, a, a historian, a, a a fan, a smark, a mark. That's right, I said it because we're all marks. I'm not offended by that. When they used to put top tag teams and top ratings, who's the best wrestler in the world, always had it broken down by men and women because there's a big difference. Although I know in the Indies the latest rave and it'll be into the major league soon is intergender. I get it. I get it. Not for me. Not sellable. Uh, uh, doesn't sell. Not sellable. I, I said that right. You guys get it, right? And, and it really, it never did that before. Not historically. Why are you doing it now? You can't please everybody. And that's what makes a lot of podcasters and people in this business and in life and in general to yourself and in this magazine business. You can't please everybody. You got to tell it like it is. Feelings are going to get hurt. None of us are perfect. We're all going through hard times. It's going to only get worse. It's supposed to. You've got to survive. Got to adapt. I don't know if I can. I'm not saying that. I'm going to try my damnedest. That's for damn sure. So that's what really, uh, they mixed men and women. You're going to compare a 140-pound woman to a 250-pound man. Totally different styles, strengths, a skill set, level. Really? Really grind my gears, man. Like I said, it would burn my ass about a flame this high. I think I finished that joke, didn't I? It's, I know, it's an old knee slapper. I gotta explain everything? So we're gonna look at heavyweight women, tag teams, different companies. I, again, this is like kind of going down ratings, and I know it's a work. And the people over there, 20, 30, 50 staff members that do this... Legends. I've been supporting you for 30 or 40 years before you come at me. Okay? Remember that. I'm paying your fucking salary. You work for me. Remember that. 
sounds familiar, like I just heard that recently. But it's true here. I pay your fucking salary. Remember that. I have a right. And I was in this business for 30 years and I took the fucking bumps. I have a right. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve anything. I earned it. The most well-known unknown. And I'm humble about it. Trust me. Ask anyone that knows me. So we're going to go. I guess we'll start off. At, it, again, this is the summer of 2024. We're in October. I get it. The top heavyweights. June of 2024. Again, this is content for you guys. Stress reliever. I appreciate it. Cody Rhodes was number one. You got to think back and do a little research and due diligence. Sit back and reflect on this at the time frame and where they were and who was the world champion. I'm going to help you out. Number one in the world for heavyweights. Cody Rhodes. Number two, Swerve Strickland. Number three, Damian Priest. Number four, John Moxley. Number five, Moose. Now I'm going to give you what they put in here. Okay? I'm going to give you. You can screenshot that. You can clip this. I don't, I don't care. I don't know if you do. And, and their credential of why they are where they are. For Cody Rhodes, he's the number, being at number one in June of 2024, he was the WWE and still is undisputed universal champion, which is really two belts in one that they created. And then, of course, they have the World Heavyweight Champion, which is really the third belt, just my opinion. Can we have one world champion in your company? That's why you have secondary titles. Number two, Swerve Strickland, the AEW World Champion at the time. We know he is not now. John Moxley is now. Number three, Damian Priest, who was the World Heavyweight Champion. We know now it's Gunther, the Walter. Gunther, Walter, Walter, Gunther. I just like saying that because he was Walter, the Walter. And good, I was Gunther. I think perhaps one of the best grapplers in the world today. I'm a huge fan of the work of Gunther. Number three, he's the here. It's Damian Priest who was the world champion. I don't get it, but you understand. Number four, John Moxley, as we talked about at this point, was the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Not sure who is now. I have to research it. It's right over here. I don't want to interrupt the show. Number five, Moose, who at that point was the TNA World Champion, which he is no longer. Number six in the top ten heavyweights in the world in June 2024, Kyoto Kiyomaya. Konichiwa, bitches. Who was the GHC heavyweight champion at the time. Number seven, who was the Triple A Mega Champion, not MAGA, don't be offended, which really is a great saying, no matter who you are, liberal, conservative, whatever, I'm not, here, I'm not here to talk about that right now. Make America Great Again. What the fuck is wrong with that? That's not affiliated with any party, any person. The individual, make America great again. Proud of your country as a third generation American. The fuck? Anyway, Nick Nemeth. The AAA Mega Champion at the time, number seven in the world. Number eight, who was the NWA World Champion at the time, EC3. Boy, has his career floundered, but he turned it around when, when he went and did the uh, independence. Kind of like the woo-woo guy there, uh, Matt Cardona. Guys that really have done well that were... Uh, Medium to low medium, not used properly, booked right in the, in the big companies, especially WWE. Oh, Nemeth had a nice run. Uh, longevity. Uh, guys that are doing well for themselves in the indies. Even guys like uh, Johnny Morrison, Johnny Monday Night, Johnny Valkyrie. I don't know. What the fuck? So EC3 was number eight. Number nine, top ten in the world at the time. I think the picture behind me just fell down. Stand by. Number nine, the Triple Crown Champion in Japan. New Japan. Yuma Anzai. 
not to be confused with Banzai, Yuma Anzai, number nine in the world, June of 2024, followed by Satoshi Kojima, who was the MLW world champion, a very reputable company here, MLW. No one to be trifled with, great talent. I thought something fell. No? Can you see me? Can you see it? I don't know. What? Why are you telling me to go lower? So that was your top 10, their credentials and where they were in June of 2024. Now we'll compare it and jump right over to the more updated again, still August, three months ago, July of 2024. Here were the top heavyweights and, and we'll, we'll compare them. July 2024, we just talked about the top 10 in June of 2024. Again, these are dated for our, they're four months, three months behind. These are dated for fall and October. Just so we get the time frame here. Got to keep it in perspective. Number one heavyweight champion of the world in July of 2024, according to Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Leave your comments here on what you think. Because if I run down of what I thought at that point, I probably disagree with at least 50% of this, especially, and I, I, the issues are over there somewhere where they mixed it with men and women. Number one heavyweight in the world for July of 2024, Damian Priest, who was the world WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Again, number two belt, number three belt, however you want to see it. How the fuck? And no disrespect to him, he's made himself into quite a grappler. Damian Priest, how is he number one in the world? I just, I don't understand that. Can somebody explain it to me? Did he earn it? I don't want to hear deserve. Number two in the world for July 2024 was the undisputed champion Cody Rhodes. How is the second, third tier belt, in the, in as far as the world championships, ahead of the undisputed world champion? Pro Wrestling Illustrated, that's what I'm talking about. You have your head in your ass. How could I take you credible, Kate Fade, make believe or not? You're selling this for 10 bucks a pop. You're supposed to be the voice in what's left of journalism and the magazine era in this fucking industry. Number three, in July 7th, 2024. Swerve Strickland, who was the AEW World Heavyweight Champion at the time. I would say justified. Whether it was July or June with Swerve Strickland. Swerve Strickland was number two in June in the world and number three in July. I, I, I can attest to that because of the status of the number one belt in the second company in this world. It makes sense. I'm not saying by statistics or talent. I'm just saying. Skin color, which everybody seems to be. I'm the first this, I'm the first that, I'm the first. What the fuck? You just, can you just be? Or no? No, that's not how it is. That's not how we're doing it. Your race card has been declined on this channel. Again, I don't give a fuck. I don't. Number three, where well, we just said Swerve Strickland. Number th uh, four in July 2024. Remember, number four was John Moxley in the June. He was the IWGP world champion. Number four, Tetsuya Naito, or Naito, as we know. We've seen him in AEW. Who was the IWGP world champion, defeating John Moxley. Uh, it makes sense to have Naito 4. IWGP is a pretty big title in the world. Not above WWE or AEW's world champion, but right there. I can agree with that. So uh, I'm, I'm on board with the June ratings of Rhodes, Strickland. I don't know if I would have put Priest at three, Moxley. I'm, I'm on board with that. And here, I'm not on board with Damian Priest. Uh, but I can go with Cody, Strickland, Naito. Number five here in the heavyweight division. It was Moose, the TNA world champion. Probably the third biggest company in pro wrestling. Am I right? 
talent-wise, uh, storyline-wise, I, I, I think I'm, I'm right. I think so. Number five here in July of 2024, happy 4th of July as we go back to go forward, was Will Ospreay, who at the time was the AEW International Champion. You see I'm wrapped up in chains here. You, you, you see that, right? It goes with the, the moniker. It goes what I did for a living. It goes how life is right now. Let me put it back. There's a little, little distraction here. So, Will Ospreay, number five, and now which is what? Second or third title in AEW? I'm not sure if I agree with number five here in July of 24 with Will Ospreay, although he's won definitely the top five talents in the world. So what do we, you know, they say that they base it on uh, d different things here. The ratings are based upon the one loss records, with, which don't really mean much, but it's a matter of tracking some sort of analytics. Uh, it's quality of opposition, which I don't believe they pay attention to. It's inherent skill of each wrestler or tag team, which I don't think they pay attention to. Uh, submitted by different promoters. The ratings are compiled by a committee of consisting of different several writers there. What are their qualifications in the business? Have they ever been in the business like back in the magazine era of the 70s and 80s. I'm just calling it out. I'm giving the good, the bad, and the ugly. So that's what that's what they're going on. I'm, it, I'm just saying. So Will Ospreay, number five, I can argue that, July of 24, is compared to Moose, who was the TNA champion uh, of perhaps the third-tier company in this industry back in June. Then they go on to Mystico as number six in the world, who was ranked number one in Lucha Libre CMLL company. Now, I certainly don't agree with that. In, in June of 2024, you didn't have anything but the Triple A mega champion in Nick Nemeth in the ratings, who was number seven. But here you have at number six, Mystico, who's not even a champion. Which I think should affect things if you have that belt, prop or not. That means you earn money, you've earned it, you put asses in the seats. That's why they give you a belt, for or not. You guys get it, right? And how much it means for a company to decide to put a belt on you. Independent or the big leagues. Number seven is Moose, who still was the TNA world champion. So Moose went from five in June of 2024 down to seven in July of 2024. Don't see why. I guess you want to go by quality of opponent and so on and so forth. One loss. He didn't lose. He was still the champion. Again, I get we could pick at everything, but I'm telling you, it was even worse a year ago when they were mixing genders. Could we stop trying to please everybody and separate the two when it comes to this competition, sports entertainment, if you will? Number eight in July 2024 was Sami Zayn, who was the WWE Intercontinental Champion. Who's listening? Who's been on the rise in the last year or two when he was an honorary oops and so on and so forth? People have really taken to Sami. Uh, I don't think of him much. He could work uh, the haluva, hell of a kick, and so on and so forth. Give him credit. Put asses in seats, especially when they book him in his home country. Uh, I get it. But here he's number eight as the Intercontinental Champion. Now, where would you guys put the Intercontinental Champion as far as rank, not only in the company, what in WWE it's at best the fourth most important championship. So the fourth most important championship in that company's worth more than number one of other companies or number two of other companies or their second tier championships. That's what I'm getting from here. Not sure I agree with it when the WWE Intercontinental Champion was nowhere to be found in the top 10 of June 2024. But in July, debuts at 8. John Moxley, who was in June the IWGP, we know that, now the former IWGP World Champion is ranked number nine in July. So he went from number four as 
the Japanese heavyweight champion, to number nine. Not sure I agree with that. Moxley is not a great worker. He's earned it. I get it. He's been around. He's not new to this. He's got talent. You know what he's doing currently? You work for me? No, I don't, John. Dean, I don't. I'm not sure if he deserved to be number nine in July 2024. I get that he dropped, but is he still in the top ten as not a champion? I'm not saying that if you're not a champion, you can't be in the top ten. Again, people don't take ratings as shit in this industry when it used to actually mean something. I'm not talking about one loss. I'm talking about kayfabe. I'm talking about some sort of form and pecking order. Hello? McFly? Why do I have to say that all the time? Number 10, here in July 2024, the winner of the men's money in the bank, Drew McIntyre. Now, Drew wasn't in the top 10 in uh, June of 2024. We know that. Here he is, not a champion, but won the money in the bank. Now, where the fuck does that rank? It's not a championship. You get a shot. But where does that rank in the pecking order of WWE and in the overall scheme of pro wrestling? I get it. He's a great worker. He might have had a great one-loss record and quality of opponents. He's always wrestling the best. And an unbelievable t talent. Kind of got screwed over for being the COVID champion as an asterisk. Not sure. Don't agree with him being in the top 10 in July of 2024. We're about 40 minutes in, 40, a little over 40 minutes, as we do Pro Wrestling Illustrated, top 10 in the world in the summer of 2024 in the comparisons and what we're doing here. Obviously, we're coming back with more content. I want to cover the top women, briefly, top tag teams, most popular, most hated, before we get into company ratings, because they have it broken down into WWE Raw uh, uh Rankings, SmackDown rankings, not ratings, AEW, TNA, New Japan, MLW, the NWA, NXT, Ring of Honor, Triple A. They have all those broken down, men and women, in Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Comprehensive, again, can't take away the work. But how you come up with it in the process, I can. Especially when I'm the consumer. Again, you work for me. And then, of course, June 2024, the issues that we have here. Again, all the different companies, uh, most hated, and so on and so forth. And it really is incredible. And they even go on in these ratings analysis to other companies like CMLL, NOAA, All Japan, the Independents, Pan-African, Junior Heavyweights, Color Commentators, Managers, Top 10 Indie Gems. Back in the magazine era of the 70s and 80s, you had about AWA, NWA, WWF, maybe New Japan or All Japan. You had the most hated, you had the most popular, and you had tag teams. And that was fucking it. You had indie ring reports, and I love the ring reports in these magazines, because those are truth. Those are accurate as far as to what really happened in this business. They even have Dragon Gate and... and, and ICW in Scotland and Melbourne and, and, and Australia and Progress Wrestling. Everything you can think of. ECWA, Ohio Valley, West Coast. I mean, uh, it really is something as far as that goes, as far as ratings and, and rankings. So if it wasn't so important, why is it in the biggest magazine in this fucking industry? It really is. Uh, backstage interviewers. Uh, iconic looks. Of Seth Rollins. Some of it's garbage. Pure garbage. And that's why this magazine, put you put too much information in it. You charge 10 bucks in for it. But is that really something that we need rankings for? I get it's kayfabe and sports entertainment. Can we keep it simple? Stupid? No offense. I'm not saying anybody indirectly. Dungeon Wrestling. Uh, Hood Slam. The World Wrestling Council out of Puerto Rico. Uh, so... Uh, GCW, WXW, Marigold. It really is something, the different ratings analysis here in this magazine that they charge you 10 bucks for, plus tax. Tax to death, we know that. And the two different magazines that I'm reporting on here today. 
magazine era again. So don't go anywhere. I, I don't want to get too crazy. I want to keep the shows under an hour. I want to keep your attention. We all know pencil neck geeks have the brain of a dehydrated BB. And these are to the people that don't hit the like button or make a comment or, or subscribe. It's free. What, what are you doing, man? No offense. No offense. What I say. So we're gonna come back. We're gonna continue to break this down and analyze these magazines and the ratings analysis. If this is what you're into, again. We have a lot to talk about. The women, the tag teams, most popular, most hated, before we break down the company. So this is going to be uh, maybe a series, uh, definitely part of Chaos Corner, the show. So don't go anywhere. And remember, remember, I do want to break down before we get out of 2024, depending on what's going to happen in the world, I want to break down some of the PWI 500. I still know some of the talent that's around and some guys that deserve to be in there on the independence, but that's another story for another time and another show. But we will break down the top 10, top 20, maybe even top 50. So don't go anywhere. YouTube has taken their foot off my throat. I had to give them a clothesline and a forearm smash, a boot to the side of the head and a, a chair to the back because those are my favorite maneuvers along with that fucking eye poke. So don't go anywhere. Again, thank you guys so much for being here. This is what I fucking love, man. This is some good shit. I know we're going through hard times. I'm praying for all of you. And I mean that. So drop a little prayer for me as well. I appreciate it. I certainly could use it. And I'll say that to say this. <laughs> because I tell it like it is. Don't you dare miss it. <laughs>